This is our rolling coverage of the exit polls 2024. Before we sipped into a break, uh, Pankaj Bora, let me bring you to the conversation. You didn't get an opportunity to really comment on the exit polls. What are your first thoughts? Let's begin with that. What do you make of the numbers that are coming out, especially uh, also in the poll of polls that we continue to reflect on our screens uh, at the bottom on the ticker right there? Everybody, it seems, is giving pretty much a sweeping victory to the Bharatiya Janata Party and the NDA. Without casting any aspersions on those who have conducted the poll, I find it very difficult to believe the numbers which have been put out, whether it is in polls of polls or whether it is of this specific poll. The thing is that the uh, highlight of these of, uh, polls of polls also is that none of these polls have crossed the 400 mark. Okay. And, and you know, they are all under 400. Okay, pardon and, me, and Mr. Bora. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Bora. We're just going to fix your mic right there. There's some issue with that. But let me bring in Sujata Pandey as well. Sujata Pandey, uh, your first thoughts and comments on uh, the numbers that have now come out. So, my predictions were uh, in this range itself, in your, the expertometer that you had conducted. And uh, it again proves two things. One, Modi, there may not be visible Modi wave that you saw in 2019 after Pulwama and Balakot, but the, there is a Modi factor which is alive and kicking. And also in the states where there was, there was uh, issue-based election, people said that it's localized. Ho gaya hai. In there also, I think Modi has won in because the delivery of the schemes have been done on the ground. And I think one of the major trends, I mean, once you analyze that, that will come out, is that the women voters have played a very, very big role. And, uh, you know, the way you, you see Karnataka, I thought uh, Karnataka was the best case scenario for Congress because if at all, you know, Congress and its allies had to come in power as per their, their calculation, they had to win out of... 225 seats where the PAP Congress direct fight was there and, they, and Congress had to get 100 out of the entire thing. In the Karnataka also, they have not been able to do so. They have every, they had everything going on for them. They had a, they have a govern, uh, government in Karnataka. They have the, the party chief is from Karnataka. You have DK Shukumar. You are giving schemes. You, you said that you will do caste census, but right. it looks like nothing has worked in Karnataka. And that is also getting reflected in Maharashtra because uh, if you see that it doesn't regain or gain its position, India Alliance cannot because they are acting in fractions. You know, they are sub regional parties in, di in different pockets. So they cannot themselves form the government without Congress. Your Congress had to, had to outperform itself. But it looks like there's nothing is going to change. So in one word, Modi remains a factor. And people have chosen basis on who's with Modi and who's not. Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, can we hear Mr. Bora now? Is it possible for me to... Okay, Ms. Bora, yes. I believe your mic is fixed now. Go ahead, sir. Well, I was saying that, you know, without uh, raising any doubts or uh, casting any aspersions on those who have conducted the polls, I f find these numbers very hard to believe. First of all, the thing is that there is no wave which is visible, which can, you know, pro uh, take the numbers so high. Number two, the RSS was not working on the ground this time, so I wonder how the BJP can, you know, get so many seats on its own accord. Number three, you know, at so many places, there were candidates who had been brought from other parties who were contesting. And, you know, there was local rebellion within the ranks of the BJP organization where people who thought that these candidates have been given, uh, you know, uh, the tickets at their cost. Number five, four, four you know, the, 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 there was also this uh, huge uproar over the manner in which, uh, you know, uh, many of, uh, I mean, the, the way the campaign was conducted and even people who were diehard supporters of the BJP were appalled at the manner in which, you know, the Prime Minister and the senior BJP leaders were actually, you know, using the kind of language which does not befit the position they hold. So, and number six, the Election Commission's, you know, uh, inability to rein in people who were, you know, violating hmm. the code of uh, conduct or were, you know, guilty of various kinds of transgressions, you know, has also been brought into picture. And these polls also, if you notice, none of them, you know, uh, has crossed the 400 mark. And, uh, I mean, the BJP slogan was, Ab ki bar char so far. And also we need to understand that those who have conducted the polls, we have to also go into the kind of alignments they have, ideological alignments, and whether they are, 
your non biased impartial people who have okay. come out with findings which can appeal therefore all these polls are going to be on trial and let us wait for june 4th when the actual results will be out Okay, all right. Uh, Priya Sengal bringing you in as far as uh, the numbers for South are concerned. Yes. Uh, Karnataka and Telangana, surely, uh, as if the exit polls are to be believed, will be a disappointment then for the Congress. Uh, even Carol, if you know our poll is saying two seats uh, for the BJP, that yes. will also be a disappointment for the Congress because Carol is a state that where Rahul Gandhi contests from, and that's a state that has always stood by the Congress uh, through all the Modi waves. Which is why you know I am um, again I agree with Pankaj totally. You know there is this these numbers speak of not just a wave but uh, you know a tsunami in the positive sense, not in the negative. It's like a youth sweep for Prime Minister Modi, which we didn't see on the ground where I went. You know in that sense, uh, South uh, well uh, the, the Prime Minister did. Uh, spent a lot of his campaign uh, time uh, in the south he began from there he's been focusing a lot in the south hmm. but that the numbers would convert in such a way telangana yes i am not surprised i did expect the bjp in fact the bjp did increase his vote share in the assembly uh, elections recently also andhra they've got a very good partner in chandrababu naidu and they you know there seems to be some kind of a chemistry at work i, I don't know what a uh, karnatak again i'm a little surprised because they had really peaked there is a congress government in uh, in the state level also there has been a lot of uh, positive feedback for the Congress. Plus, there was this whole scandal with the JDS, which yes. who is a partner of the BJP. So there, I am a little surprised uh, because I uh, at the you know the fact that the BJP is not just retaining its lead, but the Congress is not being able to catch up at all. You know, I think four and five seats is nothing hmm. compared to the stronghold the Congress has in the state. So South, I am a little surprised at really, and the BJP of course has huge reasons to celebrate. No more can it be called a party of the North uh, if these numbers hold true. Okay, Himanshu, but your comments as well on the South, because quite interestingly, uh, in Bangalore, yes, uh, as Priya was also pointing out, when we did go on the ground, uh, in Bangalore specifically, a lot of people did say that uh, uh, people are very disenchanted with the BJP overall, but I... I did tell them that, listen, when I literally speak to people on the ground, when I speak to a voter on the ground, they pretty much are in favour of Narendra Modi. So there, there were uh, certain classes of people in Karnataka that were thinking that uh, it's game over for BJP, but the numbers really do say otherwise. And truly, it will be uh, somewhere then a disappointment for a DK Shiv Kumar and a Siddharamaya. See, I'll tell you one thing. When you talk to people on the ground and the reasons what you get is what it is reflecting here. Hmm. And these exit polls are always underplay. You, you take up 2014, you take up 2019, and you will find the results of exit poll and the performance of BJP. Exit polls have always been underplaying that. And always the BJP comes up on Trump. The reason for that is, and in this election, it is going to be a Narendra Modi election. People, did, people are not seeing the positive tsunami. But I'll tell you, it's a 10%. It's a 10% swing that number of seats that BJP will get will win. Whatever these exit polls say. Because exit polls, on one side, when you compare them, 19, 14, and 2024, hmm. you will find 14 and 19 were underplayed by at least 10 to 12, 20%. The ultimate results which came out after 14 and 19 exit polls are exactly 20 to, uh, 20 to 10 percent positive for BJP. In that sense, if I look at it, these exit polls are not going to stand by the 4th of June. And when you talk of South, I'm very, very clear. I'm very, very clear. First, let's come to Karnataka. JDS scandal did come. But when the assembly elections took place. People had made up their mind even then, even then, majority of the voters. I have met people who have been saying, yes, this is an assembly election and we are going to go with Congress this time, but come Lok Sabha election and we are with Narendra Bai. Okay. And that is what is reflecting here. And that's why, you know, see, there are problems in BJP within Karnataka. But those problems notwithstanding in Lok Sabha okay. is the sole face of Narendra Modi that is winning them these seats. And Tamil Nadu, I'll not be surprised if this NDA faction comes up with six to eight seats, not two seats just. Because there are toss-up seats there. Okay. 
and, uh, okay, I want to bring in Pankaj Vora as well. Pankaj Vora, as far as the South is concerned, specifically Tamil Nadu and Kerala, where uh, the exit polls are predicting that the BJP will finally be able to now make the inroads that they've been hoping to make for many, many years. Is that still then just a big victory for the Bharatiya Janata Party? Is that something that they can pat themselves on the back for? No, I, I'm sure that BJP will increase their vote share both in Tamil Nadu and in Kerala, but I don't think they are going to win any seat in either of these two states. I, I don't see it happening this time and maybe in the 2029 elections it may be possible. They will go with a greater uh, vote share, and but that is just for academic purposes. At the end of the day, what matters is the seats and who has won the seat and who has lost the seat. So, th th their attempts are there and uh, they will continue to make these attempts, but they are not likely to get any seats in these two states at least. Okay, all right. I want to bring in uh, Nikhil as well into the conversation. Nikhil Jain, uh, moving away from the south, coming to Uttar Pradesh a bit, Sudhartha Pandey was also pointing out about uh, you know certain factors leading up to a Modi wave. Of course, uh, one can't have a conversation about Uttar Pradesh uh, without talking about Ram Mandir. The sort of numbers that are then finally coming out of Uttar Pradesh for the BJP, predicting a win of 65 seats. Will that then somewhere also be disappointing for the Bharatiya Janata Party, which was really hoping to sweep the state better than the previous two times, uh, especially now that they've delivered on that big promise of the Ram Mandir? Devika, I think if, the, if these numbers hold true, the BJP would not be disappointed one bit because they, they as well as other people knew from the start that Ram Mandir, the construction of the Ram Mandir isn't going to add any new votes to the BJP. Anybody who is going to vote in an election on the basis of whether a Mandir can be built or not, whether a Mandir has been built or not, that person was already voting for the BJP. Of course, that works in the BJP's favour in enhancing the fervour of their supporters and their cadres, but I don't think that's going to add any more votes. Therefore, I, don't, I didn't expect any additional seats for the BJP. However, again, going back to my initial point, but that I never saw any wave in this election. Pretty much everybody, every analyst who was talking during the course of the elections identified this, that there was no wave. I don't understand how the BJP can increase its tally from, uh, tally from 62 to 65. I, in fact, mm. in fact, expected a decrease in the tally, given the fact that Jats invest in UP and uh, uh, Rajputs invest in UP which are considered, you know, solid vote banks of the BJP. They were strongly against the BJP this time around. Eastern UP, BJP wasn't able to do much. And a previous panelist on the show had said that women voters have played a decisive role in ensuring this, these sort of numbers for the BJP. I'm not quite sure how that is because the India Alliance was making a number of good promises for the women and a lot of talk did happen about the India Alliance or the Congress's manifesto, no less by the Prime Minister himself. And of course, there were the allegations of sexual assault on Bhushan Sharan Singh, whose son by the way, was given a ticket by the BJP, then the spreadwell Devana scandal. I don't understand how and why will the women of the country vote for this government. Again, so I will present the same challenge that I earlier did. Okay. I don't really agree with these numbers. Okay, I want to bring in uh, Sunny uh, Dhiman into the conversation as well. Sunny, as far as the UP numbers are concerned, will it be somewhere uh, a disappointment for the Bharatiya Janata Party? Yes, of course, uh, if the exit polls uh, do end up being true on the 4th, they were at 62, They're, we're predicting 65, everyone else is also predicting similar numbers. So the tally has increased, but the Bharatiya Janata Party was really hoping and the majority of their seats will end up coming from Uttar Pradesh. That was the expectation. So as per, uh, again, so uh, I'm again repeating that uh, I have some confirmation bias because my data belongs to certain agency, certain political organization. So, according to my understanding, uh, they, this election is without any wave and along with that there was an undercurrent. So, there is a difference between undercurrent and wave when people come up front and say that we are going to vote here or there. But undercurrent is something even when the party doesn't know whether these people will vote for me or not. And that's happened in Uttar Pradesh and that's happened in Haryana and Rajasthan. And I'm not saying that they will be clean sweep by the India Alliance, but I'm saying it is going against the wishes of uh, uh, BJP or NDA in uh, both uh, in, in Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Haryana. And especially uh, uh, the fellow panelists were talking about uh, uh, Kerala and uh, hmm. Karna Karnataka. I don't see that uh, what data we got, uh, th this, there is any space uh, for BJP to gain because there was no wave from, uh, from the side of BJP. 
there's no strong appeal like prime minister modi is, is is still a big leader there's no doubt but there's no wave there's no pulwama and ram mandir issue i'm sorry to say but you know uh, this uh, these days because of the internet savvy people uh, it's it it was like a 15 second reel and it has passed now people are talking about their uh their basic issues uh, health education employment these were the issue and uh, that's why i'm saying that uh, i have met many people personally and again my personal data is not sufficient to claim okay. uh, that's again the caveat but i have met people who were not ready to speak against bjp in the beginning but mm-hmm. I, i have to poke them half an hour and then said uh, the okay yeah we are going to vote against bjp they will vote against bjp not for some candidate so uh, i have my observations and my uh, my reservation about this uh, these exit polls because the because when you go to the election booth when you press the button of evm there's nobody who is seeing you you can press wherever you want to press and in case of undercurrent there will be a surprise on 4th of june and uh, that's my understanding okay priya sagar bring you in on uh, the issue of uttar pradesh as well what are your thoughts uh, if the bjp is not particularly gaining from up where exactly are then the big numbers coming in from well uh, you know uh, one thing i must say we were discussing how the bjp will react to these numbers i think the prime minister will be very happy but the rest of the bjp may not be so happy because they want a prime minister who needs them you know here again they will go back to being mere puppets and rubber stamps and you know he will have his own say so a weaker prime minister is uh, something that the bjp also wants the opposition also wants so these numbers i think the, the bjp itself is going to have a tough time uh, digesting it uh, whatever they may tell us on record uh, up uh, you know come to uttar pradesh you know i have seen the alliance i thought uh, did uh, raise uh, a lot of issues especially in western up the first two phases uh, the minority vote also you know with mayawati sitting out literally came to the alliance to the india uh, block of uh, leaders um, which is what also got uh, if you notice the, uh, the you know after the first two phases we saw the prime minister sunday raking up and the bjp getting very uh, into panic mode and raking all kinds of issues from mangal sutra to whatever to uh, you know play up the whole um, uh, rhetoric of religion rather than the caste rhetoric that the uh, congress had uh, raked up so given all that i am a little surprised but you know let's take the numbers since it's our poll let's stand by it and see how where it goes uh, i think there's going to be a lot of um, thing where yogi is concerned modi is concerned those are the issues whose win is it is it modi's win it is Yo- or is it yogi's win because on ground uh, it was the double engine you know when the prime minister went to file his nomination he had yogi by his side uh, the, uh, there will be that divide also that will be uh, coming up in various narratives um uh, in terms okay. of uh, congress just one seat i think and which seat will rahul give up why not or <laughs> this thing is going to be very interesting also will he just walk off from up because you know that's a state uh, where he feels hasn't delivered if this is the numbers that are going to come which is what they had also said earlier that he's going to win both and then he's going to leave one uh, for yeah, his sister to win he was inclined to contest you know it was once the samajwadi party insisted that he would otherwise they said give us back the seat and we'll give a good fight that rahul actually contested Yeah, absolutely. Pankaj Bora, uh, as far as SP is concerned, they uh, is this could it be considered by them then a good performance as far as Lok Sabha is concerned, given that they will also be increasing if the exit polls are to be believed, their tally from last time around and Mayawati, uh, as per our polls, completely wiped out of Uttar Pradesh. Well, the SP and people close to SP are very hopeful that the SP will you know perform much better than what it has it had done the last two times, and they are also hopeful that. Uh, you know sp will be somewhere near the 20 mark i don't know how but i'm just giving you a feedback of what i've heard yes, I, i mean it may be less or more that is that will be determined on june 4th but the fact remains that bjp is you know losing seats in uttar pradesh how many god alone knows and the congress by rep- ground reports is also gaining some seats it had only one seat last time and it is likely to get between 4 to 5 so all these seats will cut into what uh, were the seats held by the bjp earlier and uh, up you know uh, many people have found that yogi adityanath was more popular if not as popular as mr modi was and and uh, you know that factor did help the bjp but there were so many other factors which were working against the party i mean the absence of rss as mm. I, as i had stated earlier you know makes it extremely difficult for bjp to have the kind of results which you know it had done the last two time it it achieved the last two times 
Okay, Hivanshu, but uh, as far as Uttar Pradesh is concerned, you know, an interesting point was raised that it, whatever the numbers may be, somewhere there will be a discussion whether this is uh, Narendra Modi's win or a Yogi Adityanath's win. As far as Yogi Adityanath is concerned, and also the sort of campaigning that we saw this time around, especially after the Ram Mandir was built, uh, given that it's not necessarily translated into the numbers that the BJP was expecting, at least as far as the exit polls are concerned, uh, what do you make of what's uh, probably happened in Uttar Pradesh? Because uh, do you or do you feel that somewhere the whole narrative on Hindutva was taken up a little bit too much by the Bharatiya Janata Party in UP? I don't think so. I don't think so. What's going to happen is something different, you know, that we can only speculate. You can believe one way, I can believe other way. Right. It's only the fourth that, you know, will come out with the results. Right now, we are going by the exit polls. And which says, you know, BJP winning 65 seats, that's a gain of just two or three. Yes. And with their partners, maybe going to 68 or 70. And Samajwadi party making gains. So that means this exit poll very clearly shows that Mayawati's vote bank has gone and voted for Samajwadis. Hmm. It's only in that case, in that scenario, that Samajwadi party could win this many seats. Looking at the UP's dynamics. When that is the case, you know, I would go, I'll stick my neck out and say that this exit poll will prove, prove themselves wrong. Okay. The reason for that is the social combinations which people have been talking about is 25 years old. Let's understand one fact, this is India of 2024 and not 2004. 2004 ka nahi, 2024 ka India hai. And where in a tech savvy this, with everyone having internet on their phone and a smartphone at that, it's not going to be difficult for people to decide on their own. So don't think that BSP vote share will go to Samajwadi party totally or it will go and, you know, st stabilize and then, you know, advantage BJP. No, it doesn't happen that way. Okay. Today's scenario is something very different. The elections are fought in the minds and on certain things. And I still stick with my leg out and say, it's the women voter of UP who have got the deliveries of their cooking gas or hmm. houses or water or whatever the schemes were running. They are going to decide the fate. And this exit polls, polls of polls also. As far as UP is concerned, Maharashtra also, I'll stick my neck out and say, you know, they have been underperforming. They have been underperforming since last two elections and they will underperform even this year. Okay. All right. Sujata so Pandey, your thoughts on Uttar Pradesh? Okay, so Devika, I just, I've been just noting out, so if you don't mind, and I'll start from why they say that there was no wave or uh, whenever a journalist went on the ground, they saw people talking against Modi, there was some sort of resistance, etc. I think, you know, the basic data one needs to look at, and it's a very, you know, five standard data, is that, that the BJP got around 38-39% of the vote in the highest of the Modi wave, okay? Mm. So that means around 60%. People still did not vote for for Modi. So the probability of you meeting a Modi anti Modi uh, person on the ground is much more than a uh, than a person who supported Modi and voted Modi. Okay, that's number one. Now what happened? You know when uh, when the Prime Minister gave that 400 par, you know apki baar 400 par. Yes. The entire narrative got short sighted to array. People forgot that you need 272 and nobody is talking about that BJP already at 346. So 15-20% margin they have increased and the entire narrative was about that this will not happen or not will this Will it be or will it not be? And you know this is why the, the when the journalists went on the ground at the very first third, fourth phase because the first, second phase the, the opposition had, had completely given up. When they went on the ground, they made these 60% of the people and then they say, oh, there is there are people talking about against Modi and this has not been done, that has not been done. So, that, so here you are changing your baseline and that is why you say, oh, you, there is no way. Well, there was no, according to this okay. particular thing, there was no wave in 2014 and there was, there was, there was no wave in 2019 also and still Modi, Modi won with a huge majority. So, 
so to say that the there's no way and people are are talking about this and that is i i think we have to see the baseline from where you operate okay because you are ultimately Second saying thing, that it's just 272 that matters at the end of the yeah, day yeah yeah at the end of the yes. day uh, and and second point is you know i'll i'll come to that Secondly, someone spoke about the why would women vote for Modi or Yogi or something like that. You know, that, let me tell you that women just don't fold, don't vote for only welfare schemes. ये नहीं है कि मुझे I am getting a free bus ride in Karnataka, so I will go go with the Karnataka government. And I am getting this Ujwala, so I'll go with the. No, there are other two factors which are much more important. But the first thing is who is also giving me social security. Okay. Who know who who is also giving me economic security. Which I think the opposition needs to to dwell upon and say okay. what is the social security there. And the third most important thing is the emotional connect. Who who came to them first? Like the like I think in India it was unimaginable for a lot of women to own a house or 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 be a uh, account holder yes. in their own name. This has happened for the first time. The not, not how many women tell me a, a villager, a, a woman who is living in a village, thought that she could be a drone didi or she could be called Lakshmi okay. didi. You know the entire name, uh, the terminology itself is so men centric. Lakshmi, you know, it's not Lakshmi or Lak, you know, Lakshmi didi. So yes. Is, that entire thing came out. So, so don't forget the emotional connect. That connect Mamta Banerjee has in Bengal, and okay. that is why okay. more women vote for it. So okay. Just All right. Like okay. Last, so Jata, I, I I need to wrap up, and I would just uh, Priya, last. Word to you. Uh, basis that uh, when we say that okay, even if the BJP does not do as per the exit polls, let's assume uh, if they are able to match their performance last time around as well, and as Sujata said, ultimately the number that matters is 272, Correct. right? If they're able to match their performance from last time around, what is the larger message that the voters have then sent out also to the opposition with that? Well, even if they don't match the figures, even if they get 260, I still see Prime Minister Modi coming back. You know, I don't okay. think that there is anybody who can dislodge him, uh, given his thing. He's still head and shoulders, not just in the opposition, but within the BJP also. So definitely, he is coming back. No matter what the numbers are, they will be in the vicinity of his uh, comeback. Whether he crosses 300 or not is really a talk of slogans rather than anything else. And of course, it gives him a mandate to do much more than he wants to. But I don't think the personality of the Prime Minister is such that even with 260, he will. manage to get his way he has that uh, ability to convince people uh, the message for the opposition is focus on leadership you know they've been focusing on issues they've been focusing on the manifesto if i would say the man of the match for the opposition campaign is the manifesto you yes. know because that's what really dictated the narrative and brought the, all the parties together on one thing it wasn't rahul it wasn't kharge it wasn't tejasvi akhilesh it was the congress manifesto that was the uniting face of the opposition and in a way i am a little disappointed that it hasn't worked because it was a good document you know st- Partisan things aside, it spoke on the issues that needed to be spoken of, okay. except for our caste reservations. But economy, I think, they did make some very valid points. Okay. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.